Hello everyone, Colin Comet here for Woodwork Web. Today we have something totally different. We have a pretty unique situation where somebody has asked me to make something special. So this comes under making wood parts. And the part that I've been asked to make is something called a perch boss. And if you're not familiar with it, I'm going to show you exactly what it is and what it's used for. Let me give you a, a tiny little bit of background to begin with. As all of you know, there are dog shows and cat shows and horse shows and all sorts of different animal shows. But not a lot of you may know that there's also bird shows. And the bird show that I'm talking about now is for budgerigars or what some of you may call parakeets. Now, there are special bird shows for these birds and all of the birds need to be shown in special cages and these are called show cages. And the little perches that the birds sit on in these cages have something at the back of them that mounts to the wall that's called a boss. Now let me show you what that looks like. This little piece of wood is called a perch boss and you can see as I turn it around what it looks like. It's, it's a rounded, you can see that it's rounded on the outside and flat against the back. And the purpose is that a perch length fits through this. And here's one here with the boss already in place. Now the purpose of this boss is two things. It is to supposed to stop the perch from splitting because this perch is actually mounted against a wall, the back wall of a show cage somewhere, so there needs to be a screw driven in from the back to hold it. So this is to prevent the the perch from splitting, but it's also to help drive the bird a little bit closer to the front of the cage so that the judge can see it a little bit better. So that's the two purposes. And my challenge today is to make about 60 of these, that's six zero of these little uh, perch bosses. So let me tell you and let me go through the process of what I went through in order to make these. So here we are at a Budgerigar show and you're going to see show cages and show bosses. And here's one of the cages that we made the bosses for the perches on. And you can see the birds sitting on the perch and the bosses that are helping to support it on the back wall of the show cage. So this is a standard Budgerigar show cage. And it's nothing more than a square box with a sloping roof and that sloping roof is there to try and move the bird forward to the front of the cage so that the, so that the judge can see the bird better. But you can see the two perches in there and how those bosses encircle those perches to help support them against the back wall. Now the first thing is to know what the dimensions are and they're pretty strict on what they are. And these, the, the diameter of these bosses is one and a quarter inches and they need to be a half inch deep from front to back and the whole size needs to be five eighths of an inch. So those are all of the dimensions that I need to work with. Now the first thing I thought of was, well, I can do all this on a lathe. And so the first thing I thought of was to use my small lathe. And I did that. I made one boss on the lathe. I actually used the chuck and I turned the, the leg or turned the, the dowel to a, a one and a quarter inch and then put in the chuck and drilled the hole from the back side, 
round it over the corners, and then cut it off. Now, remember, I needed to make 60 of these, and that first one took me probably about five minutes to set up and make. And I thought, I'm, I need to find a quicker, easier way of doing this. Now, I know there's a very good chance you're probably never going to have to have to make perch bosses, but at the same time, you may need to make some wooden parts sometime, and understanding the different variables that it takes to make parts might help you with some future project. So, here's what I did. I started off with some uh, one and a quarter inch doweling. Now, I've actually cut some um, bosses out of this, that's why it's this short. It was quite a bit longer when I started off, but I wanted you to see what this looks like. So this is just one and a quarter inch dowling. The next thing I needed to do was to find the center. And let me show you what I did to find the center of these. So I started off using a center finder on one of my um, marking devices. And if you make several lines across like that, it will find the center. The problem is that doweling tends, as it, as because of wood movement, it tends to move, and so in a lot of the doweling, the center was moving around. So what I found, the next best thing to do was to actually make a little template that fits over the top of the doweling, and I can actually make a circle that way, and that's the best way to find the circle of where the center of that doweling is. And I actually do it on each side because you'll see in a minute that I use the router to do this and how I use the router to do it. So that's the center of that doweling. That's where the perch is going to go through. Now over at the router I have a three-quarter roundover bit installed which is the exact roundover that I need for these bosses. And I also have the fence aligned so that when I push this material in, it actually lines up with the center of that bit. So all I have to do is slowly move that in and turn that around and I will get a rounded over edge. Then let's do that. Okay, that work on the on the router now has given me, you can see, I have now the doweling with uh, a round over on each side. Now, because there's a little bit of burning, there needs to be a little bit of sanding, and I'm going to do that, and then I'm going to move on to the table saw to cut these off. So, here at the table saw, now what I need to do is to cut this half inch end off and I'm going to do that on each end. And I've actually set up a stop here and I've attached this to the fence so that all I need to do is butt up to this and run this through. Now I could have cut this on a sliding miter but I found that this was a little bit safer to use and that it did a nicer job because I put a special blade in here. So let's cut a couple of these bosses off. And there they are, ready for the next step. 
Now, so far there's nothing really special about what I've done, except now I have to drill a hole, a pretty big hole, through this, a 5 8 hole through a one and a quarter inch diameter piece of wood. And here's the way that I figured out how to do that. When I put this on the drill press to drill the hole out with a Forstner bit, this little piece of wood is going to spin. And in order to hold that, you can't hold that with your fingers, you're going to have to use some kind of a tool, and that of course is going to start damaging the edge unless you start wrapping um, tape or something around pliers or something. Here's the idea that I came up with that works great. What I discovered is that if you drill a couple of holes in the back and then use a little jig like this, all this is is a block of wood and I'll show you in a second, it just has two little nubs on the top. So what I've discovered that is if you drill a couple of holes in here that match this, when this sits on the drill press, there's no way that this can spin. And the tool that I did to measure that, I just measured a couple of holes that were far enough apart on here. This is just a thin piece of plastic with two holes in it. And we're going to drill some holes in the back of this boss and then fit it on to the drill press block. Here are the parts that stop, that will stop the boss from spinning on the drill press. So there's the piece of plastic and you can see there's a couple of holes drilled in that. Now what I did with this block, I actually just drilled a couple of pilot holes after these were drilled and I just put in a couple of brass screws and I, I screwed them down fairly deep. Then I cut the tops of them off and then I actually filed them down. And you can see, there they are there, you can see these are just barely sitting above this block. But that's enough so that the boss, it'll hold the boss. So in order to put some holes in the back of these bosses, all I do is lay this down. This is an anti-skid. This stuff is great. Um, lay this down on, a, on an anti-skid. Just lay this over top and just eyeball it as close enough. Drill a couple of just tiny little holes, uh, maybe an eighth of an inch deep, and then they will sit like this, just like that, into this block. And now we're going to take this to the drill press and we're going to drill out that hole. Okay, here we are at the drill press and all we have to do now is to position this block and we can actually eyeball that pretty closely once the drill press comes on and drill that hole. <laughs> boss. And so that's the process on making small wooden parts. And I thought you might enjoy this because it's so different and it's something that you don't encounter every day and it's nice to have other people's ideas on how to, to do certain things with woodworking. You may use this for making door handles, you might use it for toys, for making wheels, that sort of thing. Those are the kind of techniques that we can learn about uh, and when we come across situations where we have to do special parts at least we have some idea of some of the options that might work for us. So I'm Colin Kinnett for Woodwork Web. Thanks for watching and please make sure to look at our website for lots more tips, tricks and ideas. And if you're not already a subscriber to our YouTube channel we invite you to subscribe.